Father, we just thank you for your presence today. We thank you for how beautiful it is to love you and receive your love back. How lovely it is to just be still and know that you are God. Just be still and know that you are God. That means you're in charge, you're in control, you know exactly what you're doing, and you are with us. Well, I pray for this word this morning that you will speak directly to us through your word today. That it will be a message <coughs> from your heart to our heart. In Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. I was um, studying and looking at the Word some weeks ago, quite a while ago, and I read this particular portion of Scripture, and it really kind of dropped into my spirit. It was something that was very uh, precious, and God was clearly focusing my spirit and mind on it, and I began to pray into it, and look at it and, and uh, study it and spend time on it and then just shortly after that we had a prayer and fasting week uh, and at the end of that time we had a, an evening um, and uh, one of the scriptures that was read out, I think it was then by Tess, was the very same scripture uh, so I felt this was a com definite confirmation and it's actually the scripture is Isaiah 35 verses 1 to 10, it's the whole chapter it will be familiar to some of you and not to others. And I'm going to read this um, out loud. I'm going to read it to you. What I'd like you to do is not read it on the screen. If we can do that, Tim. Don't put it up on the screen. <coughs> Just listen to it. Listen to it as if it's God speaking directly to you and I. And then we'll look a bit further. And this is what it says. <coughs> the wilderness and the wasteland shall be glad for them. And the desert shall rejoice and blossom as the rose. It shall blossom abundantly and rejoice, even with joy and singing. And the glory of Lebanon shall be given to it, and the excellence of Carmel and Sharon. And they shall see the glory of the Lord and the excellency of our God. Strengthen the weak hands, and make firm the feeble knees. And say to those who are Fearful hearted, be strong, do not fear. Behold, your God will come with vengeance, with the recompense of God, and he will come and save you. And then the eyes of the blind shall be opened, and the ears of the deaf will be unstopped. And then the lame shall leap like a deer, and the tongue of the dumb shall sing. For water shall burst forth in the wilderness, and streams in the desert. The parched ground shall become a pool, and the thirsty land springs of water. And in the habitation of jackals, where each lay, there will be black grass with reeds and rushes. And a highway shall be there, and a road. And it shall be called the highway of holiness. And the unclean shall not pass over it, but it shall be for others. Whoever walks the road, although a fool, shall not go astray. And no lion shall be there, nor any ravenous beast will go up on it. It shall not be found there, but the redeemed of the Lord shall walk, and the ransomed of the Lord shall return, and come to Zion with singing, with everlasting joy on their heads. They shall obtain joy and gladness, and sorrow and sighing shall flee away. What a great chapter, what a great uh, image, what a great picture that God presents us in that chapter. And it deliberately, as I looked at it, I saw it not as a number of verses, but as a whole chapter brought as one message from God. And as I studied it and looked at it and asked the Holy Spirit, I felt him sharing this with me, and this is only one aspect. I've preached on this so many times. This is one aspect that he showed me this time to share with you today. And it's this. That chapter, those ten verses, give us not a single image, not a photograph, but a video 
it tells us the developing story of each of us, and particularly the body of Christ, from its beginning to glory. It shows us the growth and the steps and the movements in the church of God from its very start to the place where it ends in heaven, praising God, full of glory. And there are six steps, there are six passages here that define each of those steps. This is what I felt the Lord was saying to me and to share with you. And we're going to look at each of those steps very briefly this morning. But the last step, and if we can put that on the screen, Tim, is verse 10. And it says this, in a minute we'll just get it. It says, the ransom of the Lord shall return and come to Zion with singing and everlasting joy on their heads. They shall obtain joy and gladness and sorrow and sighing shall flee away. This is a description of us and the church in glory in heaven. The ransom of the Lord, the ransom of the redeemed, that's us who are saved. It's the final step. We are returning, we're to heaven, to glory, to where the human race was first destined to walk with God and lost that ground forever because of sin. So we return to Zion. The word Zion, if you look at it in the Old Testament, doesn't so much refer to a place, it refers to a spiritual state, a spiritual place of union with God. We will come to glory, to heaven, with singing, and everlasting joy will be upon our heads. Not transitional joy, not momentary joy, not occasional joy, but joy forever and ever and ever in the glory of heaven. <clears throat> and it says, they shall obtain joy in gladness, and sorrow and sighing shall flee away. Does that bring to mind a familiar scripture <clears throat> in Revelation where it says, in heaven there will be no more tears and no more sighs. Sorrow and sighing will flee away. There will be perfect joy and peace. So how do we, as the church of God, as the body of Christ, how do we get there? How do we get to the end? The title of this word is All the Way to Glory. All the Way to Glory. <coughs> and I just want to take very, very briefly each of these steps and show you and let it, let, let it be shown to you and revealed to you what this says about the church. So the first step is from Isaiah 35 verses 1 and 2. And I'll read it out to it. It's going to be on the screen there. <clears throat> it says this. The wilderness and the wasteland shall be glad for them. And the desert shall rejoice and blossom as the rose. It will blossom abundantly and rejoice, even with joy and singing. And the glory of Lebanon will be given to it. And the excellence of Carmel and Sharon. And they shall see the glory of the Lord and the excellency of of our God. This is a wonderful picture of the beginnings of our salvation as individuals and of the beginnings of our walk with the church, in the church and in the body of Christ. I don't know if you've seen it, but many years ago I saw a Disney nature video that was talking and looking at the desert and there was a complete scene in the desert, totally dry, full of sound, a wilderness and a wasteland. And then the rain fell. And in a matter of days, not weeks, huge, wonderful, small plants began to grow and blossom. And the thing about them was not that they just grew through the sand, but they blossomed. They brought forth flowers. The desert became an absolute prairie full of flowers. The same place began to blossom and flourish because the rain fell. <clears throat> and that picture always comes back to me as I think about this. At the beginning of our walk with God, at the beginning, the first place, the beginning of what is precious and important about our life and in the church is this, it says, the church and we will blossom and rejoice like the rose. We will blossom abundantly and rejoice with joy and singing. Because the beginnings are full of the blessings of God. Can anyone remember when you were first saved? Put your hand up, you don't have to tell me. Can you remember how that felt? 
We just felt so loved and so blessed. We felt, we felt clean inside. We felt, we were new. We felt something had totally changed. We didn't know anything. We just loved it. We loved the grace of God. We loved the love of God. We just loved, we just walked in this sense of beauty and joy and rejoicing. And that isn't just the beginning of our salvation. It's where the church begins. It begins with blessing. It begins with the tremendous love of the Lord. It begins with the change that God has brought. It begins with joy and singing. It begins with the beauty of God. That wilderness that turned into a prairie field in the desert place was the most beautiful thing I've seen for a long time. And there's a beauty that emerges in our lives, a beauty that emerges in our spirit, a beauty that emerges in the church, where we finally begin to see hope, begin to see Jesus, begin to see the love of God. And we don't know very much then, but we are rejoicing. Anyone remember how that felt? Yeah. Lovely feeling, isn't it? It says... The, the glory of Lebanon shall be given to it. Now, if you look at the word Lebanon in the Hebrew, it's actually a place, and it says pure white mountain. And it's a picture of a high and beautiful and pure place. That's the starting place of each of our salvation. And it's the starting place of the church, full of the thankful, rejoicing, redeemed of God. White and pure. The word carnal <coughs> means beautiful, as in a meadow full of beauty. And the word Sharon, oh no sorry, the word carmel means fruitful, and the word Sharon means a beautiful field. So there's this wonderful picture. Just close your eyes a minute. Great picture. When we are saved, when we are free, when, when we, suddenly we're clean inside and life is changing and God is real and things are happening, and all we can do is thank him. All we can do is smile. All we can do is sing because we were in darkness. We were under the Satan's rule himself. We were unabled and disabled and weak and absolutely poor in the spirit. But now we're saved and rich. It's a great beginning. It's a great beginning. It's the first step. But that's not enough. It's wonderful, but it's not enough. But you know, there are people and there are churches that are second and third because they're after the blessing. They're after the good stuff. They're after the, the, the loveliness. They're after the joy. They're chasing or they're, they're looking for. They're, they're positioning themselves. They're settling themselves into the blessings. But that's only the starting point in step one. We can't stay there. We have to move past that. They stay, but we move on. And the second step here is in the, uh, the verses 3 and 4. I'll read it to you. You see, if you stay, just to go back, if you stay where you are in the blessings, you'll die. You won't grow. Because the blessings will run out, we'll get in the flesh. We get selfish, we're looking to ourselves, we want more than the joy, we want more of the good stuff, we want more of this and more of that. And if we start chasing the blessings, we're going to miss God and his plan. But step two says this, strengthen the weak hands and make firm the feeble knees. Say to those who are fearful hearted, be strong, do not fear. Behold, your God will come with vengeance, with the recompense of God. He will come and save you. Now this is the next stage, this is the next development in the life of our life and in the life of the church, which is this, we begin to grow in God. We begin to move into discipleship, not just the blessing, not just the fun or the joy, but grow to be more like Jesus, grow in our life, grow in our faith, Grow in our stand with God. It says he has strengthened the weak hands and make firm the feeble knees. You know, the, the hands, our hands, what is our hand? Our hand is a picture of two things. It's a picture of what we do, our actions come through our hands. But it's also a picture of our hands holding on to the word of God and the truth of God. 
That's what discipleship is about. It's about being able to be active in our faith, be active in the Word of God, but also stand and hold on to and believe the Word of God. Can you see that? And it says, strengthen the weak hands. Strengthen them, encourage the people. Bring them the truth, tell them what they can do. It says, say to them, behold, your God is coming. He's going to destroy the enemy and he's going to reward you and he's going to save you. And it says, strengthen the weak knees. What happens if you've got weak knees? You fall over. You can't stand. Weak kneed people can't move forward. They can't stand properly. And the word of God says here, in this season, in this time, it says strengthen the weak knees. What does that mean? It means, it means encourage people to stand in their faith. And arise in their faith and believe the word of God and move forward and step forward. This isn't just about the blessings and the joy. It's about holding on to the word of God, growing in God, arising and standing and believing in God. It's about growing as disciples. It's a wonderful picture of church, isn't it? It's a wonderful picture of our life. And, and it's a great place to be because we're encouraging each other. And we're praying with each other. And we're learning how to stand and walk with God. But it's not a place to settle. It's not a place to finish. I know churches. I know pastors. Who spend all their time. Strengthening the weak knees. And the feeble hands. Let's pray for you. 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 I need prayer. I need prayer. I need prayer. I need prayer. It's more like a hospital than a church. Keep encouraging, keep encouraging, keep, yeah, we do, we do, we do, we do. But if that's where we settle, if that's where we stay, we're not a family, we're not an army, we're a hospital. And we've got to move in that and move through that to somewhere more. Can you see what I'm saying? Yeah. Oh yeah, strengthen the weakness. But I know churches who have been doing that for the last 15 years. And if you stay there, you'll be praying for each other and with each other until Jesus comes back and say, why didn't you get out there? Why didn't you grow a bit past this? We've got to grow past the help me, heal me. Haven't we? We've got to grow up, would you agree? Some of you do. See, church is not a hospital. It's not a nursery. It's not a nursery. It's not where we all feel safe and we all talk to each other and we love each other. That's great. We've got to grow past that. That's going to be the second step of Isaiah 35. But some churches stay there and they work hard and the, the pastor gets worn out and the leaders get worn out because they're just praying and praying and encouraging and encouraging. Where it could not seem to get past that. God says, no, 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 no. That's step two. Should we find out what step three is? Would that be good? Yeah. Okay. Step three. I love it. This is what it says. Verse five. It begins with a word. What is the, what's the first word of that? Yeah. Then. Yeah. Oh, okay. Then is called a preposition. Then means something's just gone and now something's going to happen. Okay, you with that? Yeah. So therefore, in Isaiah 35, it can't mean just keep on strengthening each other. Just keep on encouraging each other. Just keep on praying for each other. Because it says then, after that, this is going to happen. And what does it say? It says, Then the eyes of the blind shall be opened, and the ears of the deaf shall be unstopped, and the lame shall leap like the deer, and the tongue of the dove shall sing. That's not heaven, that's here. Are you with me? Okay, so all this prayer ministry and all this encouraging each other is for the then. And this is the next step, this is the next season, this is what the church grows into. What does that mean? I call it a picture of abundant life. Jesus says, I have come that you might have life and life abundant. In abundant life, there is revelation. The eyes of the blind are open. We get revealed to us through God himself and the Holy Spirit. Who God is, who we are in Christ. 
We get an understanding, we get to hear, it says, the ears of the deaf will be unstopped. We start hearing from God. We start hearing from the Spirit. We start being in a, a, a relationship with God that is vibrant and growing. We're seeing, we're hearing, we're listening. Wonderful. We're not just praying for each other anymore. We're not just, we're not just encouraging each other. We're hearing from God. And we're seeing the truth. And we're seeing revelations of who God is and who we are and what He's doing. There's a revelation going on. Isn't that good? I expect that, do you? Some churches don't think that happens anymore, but I expect that. I want that. I'm believing for that. And, 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 and not only do we hear and see, not only do we get revelation, not only do we get such a sense of new things that God is doing. What's the thing for this year? Behold, I am doing a new thing. See, it springs forth now. Not only that, it says, it says, the lame will leap like a deer. And the tongue of the dumb won't speak, they'll sing. Do you like that? You see, it's a little bit more than the gradual healing. It's a little bit more than the slow restoration. It says, those who are lame, those who can't walk, I'm speaking spiritually here, but it's talking about miracles as well. The lame will leap, they will arise, they will leap forth in God, they will leap into great things. They will jump and not crawl. Just think of a deer and think of a lame person next to them. That means moving in God, getting revelation, seeing and hearing from Him, and, and getting great great, just, just breakthroughs, great steps forward and steps up in the, in the kingdom of God, great things that God is doing, powerful things in abundant life. People were not only singing, were, uh, speaking, were singing, the Lord is my strength and my song, and he has become my salvation. A song is something beautiful and creative that's in me that comes out, amen? We were singing in the Spirit this morning, weren't we? There's a song that arises in us. It's a time of abundant life. It's a time of revelation. It's a time of greater relationship with God. It's a time for healing. It's a time for leaps forward. It's a time for breakthroughs. That's a great place for the church to be, don't you think? Whoa, that's wonderful. I think we'll settle there because that's brilliant. I can do with a few miracles and breakthroughs and leap through. We're not just strengthening each other. We're not just keeping going. Strengthen the weak knees. Keep up the weak. We'll get there in the end. We'll get, just persevere, brother. We'll get there. Keep, and you may drown, but just keep swimming. Keep yeah. swimming. There was a, there was a, a, there was a, a Disney film called Finding Dory. And the, the woman just kept, this person just saying, keep swimming, keep swimming, just keep swimming, just keep swimming. You know, Christian life isn't supposed to be that. Just keep swimming, just keep going, we'll make it in the end. Great revelations. Great words from God. Great breakthroughs. Great growth. Great things happening. There's songs being released. There's healings being released out of it. It's not revival, by the way, but I love it. That step, what's that step? Number three, thanks. I'm going to listen. <laughs> step three. Abundant life. But we can't settle there. Many do. We could settle there in our church. Many do. But that's only step three. We can't settle there. That's not going to take us all the way to glory. Step four. I love this. Well, I love all of it, really. So, but I really like these verses. Step four is, is verse six, B and seven. And it says, for waters shall burst forth in the wilderness and streams in the desert. The parched ground shall become a pool and the thirsty land springs of water. And in the habitation of jackals where each lay, there will be grass and reeds and bushes. Water in the Bible usually refers to the Holy Spirit. So we have here a new season. We have here a new step. It is the step where the Holy Spirit begins to move. The Holy Spirit begins to move in ways maybe that he hasn't before. The Holy Spirit brings in life. It says, waters will burst forth in the wilderness. You know, Jesus said, come to me and drink. 
For out of your inmost being will flow rivers of living water. That's the Holy Spirit. So that's the Holy Spirit moving in us, moving in our hearts and in our souls and in our spirits, and moving in us and through us and out to others. It's the Holy Spirit, it's the power of the Spirit that brings the gospel, that brings outreach, that brings us reaching out and affecting other people. It's the Holy Spirit not living in us, but moving through us. It shall burst forth in the wilderness and streams in the desert. Is, it, is that not the, the word for this year? It says, behold, I'm doing a new thing. See now it springs forth. Do you not perceive it? What was it Jesus said to the Samaritan woman? He said, if you drink the water that I give you, it will become a spring in you, welling up to eternal life. It's the move and power of the Holy Spirit. It's the Holy Spirit bringing life. It's the Holy Spirit bringing refreshing. It's the Holy Spirit quenching our thirst. It's the Holy Spirit bringing forth. It's the Holy Spirit moving in His gifts and its fruits. It's the Holy Spirit bringing miracles. It's us growing and being led by the Spirit. Being people who are led by and moved by and living and walking by the Holy Spirit. Step four. What a place to be. Aren't we learning more and more about this year? Isn't it true that in our church the Holy Spirit's moving more and more? In our times we have a, a monthly meeting about the Holy Spirit. We're getting more and more led by Him, moving in Him, worshipping in the Spirit, uh, speaking and praying in the Spirit. Wonderful times. That great place. Whoa, we're about, let's settle there. Well, that will do me fine. Well done. No, that's not the end of the story. Churches would pray to get to that place. We'd love to get that far and let's settle there. But no, that's step four. There's one more step before glory. There's one more step. There's one more season. There's one more higher place for the body of Christ and for us individually and for our church before we see revival and then we see glory. One more. The one that many may miss, but we won't. What's the missing step? We've had the others in our church. Be great. The, the joy of salvation. And then strengthening one another and growing in God, growing in discipleship. And maybe getting that sense of the abundant life of God and really beginning to see God move and breakthroughs in our life. And then having the sense of the move of the Holy Spirit. He's moving, that's got that's enough, isn't it? That's why no, there's one more step to take us to glory. Let me read it here. Step five. Isaiah 35, 8 to 9, it says this. A highway will be there, and a road. And it will be called the highway of holiness. And the unclean shall not pass over it. In other words, they'll not be allowed unto it. But it shall be for others. And whoever walks the road, even though a fool, shall not go astray. No lion shall be there, nor any ravenous beast go up on it, but it shall not be found there, because the redeemed of the Lord shall walk there and come with sinning in his life. What is needed now? What is the final step? What is the whole massive, important, vital direction? That the body of Christ and you and I need, if we are going to make it all the way to glory, it's holiness. It's holiness. It's not miracles. It's not even the Holy Spirit. He came before. It's not even the Word of God. We've got plenty of the Word of God. It's not blessing each other and strengthening each other because we've already had that. What is God? Setting down in this pathway, in this video, in this image of the church from beginnings to glory. What is it that is needed? What is it that's going to take us into the glory of heaven in the best way? It's holiness. It's called the highway of holiness. 
And a highway has two meanings. A highway, first of all, if you look at it, it means a strong, clear road. It's called a road after that. It is a road. It is a route. It is the only way. It is not one of many ways. It's not one of an assault. It is the highway. The way to glory is through holiness. Holiness. The second thing about a highway is it's high above the ground. It's not a road on the ground. It's not a road on the level of the ground. It's above where the ground is. And it's a highway. The kind of thing where you see a road that goes over a river maybe or over an area of a floodplain that can be waterlogged. And that the road, the route is built up. And it's higher than the road. This is what holiness is. Let me read out what I've written here. For you and me, and for the body of Christ and the church, there needs to be a high way of holiness. That is a higher and a clear way of living that is holy living. What does holiness mean? Holiness means set apart for God, set apart from the world, pure and beautiful. I'm going to be preaching on this, on holiness uh, soon. Set apart from the world, set apart unto God, pure and beautiful. So we catch hold of something this morning. God wants us as his family, as his body in this world and individuals to walk a lifestyle that is higher than the world. It's not on a level with the world. But it's not the same as the world. It's higher than the world. It's different to the world. It's distinct from the world. It's separate from the world. It's not attached or dependent or connected. It's higher than the world. He wants us to live in a way that is not worldly, not fleshly, not driven by our emotions or by what the world says or by what worldly philosophy says or intellect says, not what the New Ages say, not what the, uh, the, the, the Libertans say, not what the freedom fighters say, uh, not what the, there's no group, there's no group in this world that we are attached to and that we are dependent on only the Lord God, Jesus Christ, the Father and the Holy Spirit through his word. We live that way, we don't gather on a Sunday for an hour that way. It's a highway of holiness. It's higher than ordinary lives. And it says the unclean cannot walk there. That's a pretty strong word, isn't it? The unclean do not walk on the highway of holiness. So if there's sin or uncleanness, if there's things that are wrong, we're going to have to get rid of them. We're going to have to let them go. We're going to have to turn from them. Listen, we don't get to glory doing it the world's way. If the church looks the same as the world, then it's not the church. Sorry, if the church has got the best of this, they've got great lights, great seating, great facilities, great music. There are churches that are they're called, um, what are they called? Fam friendly, I don't know what they're called, there's a name for them. And the whole sense is, if you get so comfortable for sinners to walk in, let them feel comfortable. So they can come, and they'll get love, and you'll be nice to them. And, and the worship will be easy, and it'll all be very relaxed, it'll all be a bit hipster, it'll all be a bit woke, it'll all be a bit inclusive, it'll all be a bit culturally relevant, it'll all be a little bit right in these days, quite just nicely timed. It won't be archaic or traditional, no, it'll be very modern. Then you're gonna get you're gonna get a building full of people that we're all going to hell. Because they're not holy. They're not going to make it. They're not going to make it. Unless the church becomes different and distinct 
it becomes holy, separated unto God, separated from the world, pure and beautiful. Now that is going to get us all the way to glory. Why would I be saying this now? Why is it that holiness has been taught and preached on for centuries? Why now? <clears throat> because in these last days, there is one of the most frightening scriptures that talks about what's going to happen to people, including churchgoers. It says two things. It says, listen, and we're in the last days. It says this, look, the love of many will grow cold. Love for God. <laughs> Their heart will fail them for fear. Fear is taking over. And, listen, even the elect will be deceived. In the last days, even leaders, even the chosen, even those who seem to have it all sorted out, will be deceived by demons and by this world and the spirit of the age and the culture that we're living in. They will be deceived, lied to, and they will believe the lie, not the truth. Mm -hmm. Now, there are better men than me that have either been deceived or fallen and lost their ministry. There are bigger churches than this that have gotten into worldly stuff and problems and sin and corruption, and they've fallen. But in these days, more than ever, our love can grow cold. We can be deceived by the enemy, or we can be filled with fear. What is it that's going to keep us to the end? Holiness. See, that scripture says, on the highway of holiness, there will be no lion there. I think there's a scripture referring to the devil, isn't it? He prowls around like a roaring lion, seeking whom he may devour. Actually says that the devourer will not be there. Now, believe me, if we are not living holy lives, if we're compromised, and if we're in the kingdom and out, if we're in the world and out the kingdom, Sunday's kingdom, Monday's world, if we're lukewarm, if we're half in and half out, the devil is going to have a field day in the last days. Because he's roaring and prowling to devour what he can. What will keep us is not our intelligence, it's not our ability, it's not our cleverness, it's holiness. Because if, you, if you're walking in holiness, the devil can't get there. That's encouraging, isn't it? But it says the unclean aren't going to make it, they're not going to get on. Well, God loves me. I know he loves me. God's gracious. I know he's gracious. Well, I'm just living the way I want to live. I'm, I'm ignoring the word. I want to do this. I want to do that. Well, you're not going to be on any highway of holiness. not going to make it. But it does say, this is really encouraging. In my translation, it says, and I'll just read it because you think, I can't be right. It says that, and I quote, Whoever walks the road, although a fool, shall not go astray. Put your hands up if you've ever felt stupid or foolish. <laughs> Keep your hands up if you've ever made any really stupid decision. Right. Like, I won't say daily. I won't say daily. However, it says foolish people, people who mess up, people who haven't got a clue, people who get the wrong end of the skit, says they will still stay on there. They will stay on the highway of holiness. Why? Because I may be stupid, but I am holy. Because my mind may have got it totally wrong, but my heart stays holy. God sent it pure, beautiful, and separate. It's great. Stupid people, stay on the highway of holiness. <laughs> I'm, I'm really encouraged by that. Because <laughs> wisdom isn't about me, it's about God leading me with his wisdom. When does he bring that? Well, the fear of the Lord is the beginning of wisdom. Is that right? I'm going to finish the road here. Listen, please listen. I mean, you know, the Lord is doing a new thing uh, this year. And he has been in the last 12 months. Please come to the AGM because I'm sharing the vision for this year. It's so, so important. Not just what we'll be doing and the new pastor, but where the Holy Spirit's leading us and, and our theme and 
direction as a church. And this is probably the most important year since we began in terms of the life and future of this church, 2024. But understand this. Understand this. The road that takes us to Zion, to everlasting joy, to no more sign and sorrow. The road that takes us all the way to glory is the highway of holiness. So I've got to put this to you in finishing this morning. Are you up for holiness? Are you prepared to say, right, Lord, I'm going to listen to you. All the other stuff's great, and it's still going on. We're still encouraging each other. We're still we're seeing the Holy Spirit move. We're seeing miracles and breakthroughs. There's revelation. That still goes on. It's not finished with, but Lord, what I want to do, Lord, I want to, I want to step up on that highway of holiness. I want to make a decision. And it starts with a decision, not with a notion, to live a holy life. To live my life separated unto God, separate from the world, pure and beautiful. Lord, I want that. Will you help me with that? That's the way we're going. That's that's what that's the way we're going. I'm going to be preaching at least two or three teachings and preachings on this. Um, so I, I'm saying to you, um, that's where we're heading. Get ready. Now, if you now you want, if you want to be in the well, if you want to be fresh and have a fun time, okay, that's that's all right. You won't, you won't be getting that here. Just letting you know in advance. Okay, it's not going to be. Fun, 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 and let's do what we want, and all inclusive and woke. There's no woke in the kingdom of God. That's called truth and grace. And I tell you what, it's going to take us all the way into glory. Because the end of it says, and the redeemed of the Lord, the ransomed of the Lord, shall return and come to Zion with sin and everlasting joy shall be upon their heads. I don't want to scrape my way into heaven, do you? I don't want to stumble my way into glory. I don't want to crawl my way into heaven and say, you we are made it. I want to come to heaven with singing and joy, everlasting joy. I want to come into heaven rejoicing and celebrating because we're on the highway together. We are singing the songs of joy. We're singing the songs of Lord. We come marching into glory. Do you? No, not many of you, actually. I think. Of course, of course you do. I don't want to survive. I want to prosper in these days. I want to be victorious, not victim. How do I do that? Holiness. Let's pray. Father, I want to thank you today for this message that you have brought to us. This message for such a time as this. That we will not be deceived, we will not be left behind. We will not be struggling and sinking in these days. We will not be in these days led astray. We will not let our love grow cold. We will not be overcome by fear in our hearts. And we will not be lied to unbelief the lie. But we will be the ransomed of the Lord. The redeemed that walk in holiness. And the ransomed that come with sin in his only you can do it, Lord, but we make the choice to say, please, Lord, help us. Help us. So I'm just gonna, gonna finish with a song in a moment. I'm just gonna ask you, pray a prayer. But this is a prayer commitment. It's a choice that you and I need to make this morning. That we will commit our lives to become led by the Holy Spirit, by the grace of God. To walk in holiness and not in worldliness. So I'm going to say a few words, and if you want to repeat them phrase by phrase, that's fine, that's fine. And then we'll finish with a song. You've got to repeat after me Lord Jesus, I thank you for my salvation. I thank you for the beauty and the joy. I thank you for strengthening me. Thank you for growing me. I thank you for the breakthroughs and the revelations that you've given to me. I thank you for your Holy Spirit that is growing in my life. But now, Lord, for this next season, I make a choice 
to commit my heart and my life to walk in holiness in a greater degree. To live higher than this world. To live in the truth. To live pure. To live separated unto God and separated from this world. Holy Spirit, lead me, help me, give me the grace to walk in this last step. And I ask it in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. It's quite exciting, isn't it? It's nice. So we're going to finish with a song, and <laughs> it's about being holy and God who is holy. So can we stand and stand for the Lord?